As the volume of information increased at the dawn of the 20th century, so did frustration. There was too much to consume, process, remember, index, and use. It was information overload. But what if the world's knowledge could be organized and made accessible to all? For more than a century, this goal was pursued by visionaries and technologists, sometimes at a cost to their careers or credibility. But the result is our ability to do this. Belgian Paul Odelet believed that world peace could be achieved through a global sharing of knowledge. He and Henri Lafontaine began summarizing information classifying and cross-referencing it in a world palace of knowledge that ultimately held 15 million entries on cards and microfilm. When people sent questions, Odelay's staff searched the archive, retrieved information, provided query results, and most significantly, suggested cross-referenced or linked data, much like a search engine does today. At the 1851 Great Exhibition in London, inventors first shared the possibility of using microphotography to store and preserve information. By 1936, millions of documents were stored on microfilm. Inventor Emanuel Goldberg, head of photography company Zeiss Icon, built an electronic document retrieval system for microfilm, the statistical machine. Images on microfilm were indexed with coded dots and retrieved using search cards. Renowned English author H.G. Wells also hoped for world peace through shared knowledge. In his 1938 essays on the world brain, he described a microfilm-based, automated and updatable permanent world encyclopedia for the masses. At the end of World War II, American scientist and engineer Vannevar Bush published his concept for the Memex, a device to augment human memory and index information. He believed people could navigate information quickly if the process of cross-referencing was automated. The most essential feature, Bush wrote, was the process of tying two items together. Information would not be organized by traditional categories, but by free association, one of the ways the brain links information. American engineer and inventor Douglas Engelbart read about the Memex at age 20. As a radar technician serving in the Pacific, he used a video screen and light pen pointing device. Years later, working as an engineer, he wondered if computers with those tools could be interactive machines for navigating knowledge and augmenting human intellect. It was a radical idea. But in December 1968, Bengelbart and his team at Stanford Research Institute publicly unveiled their experimental online system in what became known as the mother of all demos. Well, this basically characterizes what we've been pursuing for many years in what we call the Augmented Human Intellect Research Center. For 90 minutes, the stunned audience witnessed many of the features of modern computing for the first time. Live video conferencing. Hi, Bill. Document sharing. So he's sitting there in Menlo Park looking at this text, and he can point to it. Word processing. Lo and behold, I have another one. Copy that one. And a strange pointing device jokingly referred to as the mouse. I don't know why we call it a mouse. Sometimes I apologize. It started that way. We never did change it. Elements on the screen linked to other elements using associative indexing or hypertext. The word hypertext was coined by Ted Nelson, author, sociologist, and philosopher. In 1959, he came up with his own ideas for navigating information with a digital computer. Andy Van Dam had the technical skill to implement Nelson's idea. Together, they built one of the first hypertext systems. It included concepts we now take for granted, such as word processing, multiple windows, and hypertext links. As personal computing caught on worldwide, several of Engelbart and Nelson's ideas were incorporated, but not hypertext. At CERN Labs in Switzerland, Tim Berners-Lee finally brought the pieces together. His World Wide Web became the first hypertext tool for the masses. Critics claim it's a pale version of hypertext as envisioned by the pioneers. 
But it's that very simplicity of design that allowed the web to be adopted so successfully. A world at peace through shared knowledge. We have yet to attain it. But thanks to the Hypertext pioneers, old wisdom and new inspiration are now just a click away.